Oh, wow. What a privilege to be here. Um, you can only imagine how I must feel with, uh, with men of, and ca- women of this caliber sitting in the front row. Yeah, <laughs> It's pretty daunting. <laughs> but um, yes, I want to um, trust that when Jonathan asked me that, uh, to share that it was because God had laid something on my heart. And uh, um, I would love to bring that um, to us today. Um, so just for you, th- um, for those that don't know me, my name is Julie. Um, my surname is Delisle. It's French, actually. And um, <laughs> and I am part of Josh Jen. I was um, part of um, uh, the team that planted with, with Andrew and Ems about 17 and a half years ago. Um, and I've been friends with them for over 20 years. So we have a great relationship. And about uh, two and a half years ago, they um, asked me if I'd like to come on team full time and um, be their, their personal assistant. And um, my reaction was, what, me? Are you crazy? <laughs> but um, it's been amazing. It's been a, a wonderful privilege. And um, the Lord has uh, truly been teaching me to serve um, way um, more than what I had been before and opened up a whole new field for me because of that. So, um, yeah, so I am um, so grateful. Um, I think that's probably the greatest thing in my heart is is gratefulness um, every day when I get up um, that God has placed me um, in this incredible family. And I remember meeting um, Andrew and Ems for the first time, invited them to my home for a cup of coffee after a prayer meeting. And when they left, I knew that my destiny was somehow wrapped up um, in them. And um, and that and that has after many years that has come to fruition. So I'm very privileged. Um, so I'm a mom um, of a, a 28 year old son. He's married. Uh, his name's Aiden, and he's married to Rochelle, and they have two little girls. So I'm a granny, believe it or not. <laughs> so that's really cool. My second granddaughter was born last year while I was on the Isle of Man. She came two she came two weeks early. So um, it's her birth. It's actually both their birthdays while I've been away because I've been travelling with um, with Andrew and Ems for um, yeah for the last about three months now. Um, and while I've been uh, traveling, um, obviously we've been into so many different churches and um, I've been kind of asking the Lord to speak not only to the church but to speak to me during this time. Is there anything that he'd like to say? And um, he's been speaking to me about him being a jealous God. And I think it's uh, not really um, something that we maybe, ha- um, you know, we know God is God, Jehovah, you know, the, the, the provider. We know him as the Rose of Sharon and the Rock of Ages and Elohim. Um, but the jealous God, <laughs> is he jealous? Um, and uh, I, I was uh, in, a, um, uh, in Oxygen Life and the Lord gave me a, a song uh, to sing out, a prophetic song. And the Lord was saying, I'm jealous for you. Um, I, I, I want only you. I only want your affection. And I'm here for, for you. And, 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 and I'm giving you all my affection. Um, but are you giving me all your affection? Are you giving me, um, uh, uh, you know, just limited? Or are you giving unlimited? And so I'm um, going to title um, today's message, All My Devotion. Um, because all our devotion belongs to our King. <laughs> All our devotion belongs to him, because without him, none of us would be sitting here um, today. And um, so I'd like to um, just look at Exodus 4, verse 23. Um, And um, this is um, Moses uh, speaking, and um, says, Take care, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and made a carved image, the form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. You just remember the word, the form, or form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, jealous God. In Exodus 34, verse 12 to 14, but I think we're just going to do verse 14. um, It says, For you shall not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So, you know, we can see him as, as as a jealous God, and he's not jealous of us. He's jealous 
for us. And there's a very big difference um, between the two because the jealousy that we know is a jealousy um, that's, that, that, you know, we, we, when we want something that somebody else has, we're jealous over them. And my little granddaughter is three, and when, um, uh, when her little baby sister was born, I would come and visit. And what she would do, she would come and she'd like, she calls me Nana, and she'd run up and she'd say, Nana, Nana. And I'd lift her up in my arms and I'd kiss her and cuddle her. And then we'd walk closer to towards Haley, the baby, in the crib, and she would cling onto me like a little monkey, you know, <laughs> knowing that I'm going to put her down because I want to hold the other baby. And, um, and, and that's a, a, like a, a immature jealousy. That's the jealousy. And, and she's just little. And she would say, no, my no, no, my no, no. And she didn't want me to hold the baby. Um, and God's jealousy is, is, I think, kind of a little similar to that, actually. <laughs> you know, he, he wants us to cling to him. But at the same time, his jealousy is actually the word that's used in the Old and the New Testament is it's a rising heat. It's like a red face, almost. Um, and it says uh, the, the rising heat of emotions, which are associated with intense zeal, because the word zealous and jealous are used interchangeably, and they, 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 they're more or less the same word. Um, and one of the, um, one of the uh, definitions I found, which is really beautiful, it says vigilance in maintaining or guarding something that is precious to you. And so God is, is vigilant um, um, because we are precious to him and, 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 and he, he wants to guard, he wants to guard that, um, guard, us to, guard us to himself. Um, yeah, so um, this jealousy that we're speaking about is actually, it's not just God's passing mood or, or just, you know, something that God chooses to do. It's, it's the very essence of who he is. He is a jealous God. That's who he is. And, and he desires uh, zealously and exclusively our devotion to him and our worship from him. Let me have a sip of water. Must I hold the mic a little bit lower? Maybe, yeah? Okay. Our guys tell us to hold it here. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So, um, yes, yeah, so, you know, his jealousy doesn't come um, from a place of being uh, insecure or anxious over us or frustrated or from pride like our jealousy um, would come. But it's, an, it's a byproduct um, of his absolute, um, his absolute uh, infinite wholeness. Of who he is. That's where it comes from. That's the, the root of his jealousy. And it is perfectly pure. It is a perfectly pure jealousy. And um, he does not want to share us with anybody else. He only wants us to have eyes for him. And it's so, you know, it's so difficult to you know, share just now a little bit about the church in Corinth. But it's, there's so many distractions today um, for us. There's so many distractions that constantly pulling our eye away from this, this, this God that just has eyes for us. Like, um, it's so beautiful in, in Revelations. Um, I've been reading Revelations, and um, in Revelations 4, it talks about um, these, these living creatures that are around the throne. Um, and it says that there's these four living creatures, and they're covered in eyes, and they even have eyes under their wings. Um, and do you understand that they are seeing um, they see God all the time, <laughs> no matter where they are. Um, they're seeing a different side of his face all the time. They're seeing a different side of him. And, and, and my heart today is that we would see a different side of his face today, a different facet of who he is um, um, this morning. Yeah, so um, I'd love to um, just to read um, 2 Corinthians 11, um, verse 1 to 3. Um, I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. You can imagine um, the church. Why is Paul saying that? They must be going, oh, no, not, please, Paul, not again. <laughs> not again. He's saying, please bear with me in a little foolishness, you know. Um, and, and obviously, he's spoken about this before, and he's, he's sort of wanting to repeat it again. And he says, for I feel a divine jealousy for you. 
since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And we can see uh, how Paul is speaking as a father um, to the church. And I've watched over the last few months as, as Andrew has come and apostolically spoken um, into the different churches. And I've seen this um, godly jealousy um, in him. And it's been, um, it's been awesome, but it's also been quite scary at times. Like there's, uh, it's okay if I share this, Andrew. Um, I've seen sometimes like his anguish. Um, over the church, like not having um, just their eyes on Jesus or even uh, uh, on each other as a body. And um, the, the pain, almost the physical pain um, that it's caused in And I can only imagine for Paul what it must have been like, because this was just one of many churches that he was speaking into. And, um, and, and it was a very difficult time um, uh, in Corinth at that time. You must understand it was an incredible, it was a port, an international port um, at, at the time. And so it was um, multi-ethical um, people that were coming into this port. And there were different languages and there were different cultures and different religions. And um, it was a, cent a center of pagan worship. Um, the cults of the Egyptians and the Greeks um, and, uh, and the Romans were in this place. And um, there was the temple of Venus, um, who was the goddess of love, um, was there. And there was said to be like th over a thousand um, uh, priestesses who were actually temple prostitutes in that area. Um, and the city was known um, for, for its rampant sexual um, debauchery and, and for its licentiousness. And this is, this is the, from the place where Paul's actually speaking to that church. He's saying, I'm jealous for you. I'm jealous for you. That you need to uh, make sure that the, that the enemy, that the devil doesn't come and lure you away by your thoughts. And imagine what their eyes were seeing. And you know what it's like that for us today? It's exactly the same. And, and, and I think that um, for us, we need to start having a godly jealousy over our churches and over our people and over our city and over our, our land. Um, and as we do that, that this thing would, would rise up in us and I, I'll see somebody who's about to stumble and I go, and I go up to them and I say, please don't do this. Please don't. Remember that he's going to be seeing. Remember that he's going to be looking on you doing this or, or walking into um, some kind of sin or walking into um, an, a, a, a somewhere that you're not meant to be and you're not meant to go. Um, and I think it's time for us to actually um, to, to, to become the, the jealous ones um, of each other. Um, but also we need to identify, first of all, the idols in our own lives. Man, if you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is pick up your phone to look at Facebook or Instagram or, um, yeah, or Twitter, that thing has become an idol. And an idol is something that actually takes the value and the place of God in your life. And um, last year in, uh, in September, Brad Verena shared at our, our little um, time that we have um, before the 412 Conference South Africa, and he spoke about that very thing. And from that moment, I actually realized that I was doing that very thing, and I just removed it off my phone. <laughs> like, I just, I just said, God, no, I'm just, I'm not going to have it on there. It's not going to even, I'm removing the temptation of it, even away from me. And there's so many things um, that, that can be idols um, today. And, um, you know, we've got money and material possessions. We've got uh, um, family and work and um, uh, you know, uh, our, our careers, and there's so many things that are distraction. And and yes, we have to, we have to, um, we have to have the families, and we have to be, you know, we have to give them what they need, and we need to have, um, we need to work. But our devotion has to be to Him first. Our devotion has to be to Him first. Are you guys okay? Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
when we make something of more value than God, then it has become an idol. When things or people assume a more prominent place in our lives than our relationship with the Lord, than, than with, the Lord, the relation, with the Lord himself. So while I'm speaking, I would love for you to actually examine yourselves and, and, um, and as we should almost be doing daily, like daily, I'm asking the Lord, am I making an idol of this thing, you know? Um, like um, one of my friends was saying that um, she has been spending, a, she spent so much time with her first grandchild and the second grandchild's come al- along and she felt the Lord say that that's starting to become an idol for her. She's starting to make excuses and use that as an excuse to maybe not do something, no, because I'm going to look after the children or I'm going to help. Like it's a small thing and it comes out of an intense life. I can imagine that. Um, you know, to be on the road, I think, um, for so long, part of me is like, oh my goodness, I'm going to miss my baby so much. But you know what? This is the priority. This is the first. This is, this is what's the most important. And so um, my, my family need to understand that. And if they don't, I need to bring them to a place of understanding that. Um, my, my work colleagues, they must come to a place of understanding that that church is a priority for me, that um, my church family, that the things we do are a priority. Because, because at the end of the day, um, church is it is serving God. <laughs> it is, is where he's put us to be, um, is in this family, in this body. And, and our, lo- our lives revolve around him and then him together with us in this place. Um, and um, I, I read a quote um, from somebody. They said, an idol is like a lover with which we seek companionship, committing adultery against our true husband. And that's quite a strong quote, but I thought, actually, I think the Lord is quite strong when it comes to things like this. You know, in, even in the commandments, it's like saying, don't have any other gods before me. I alone want your devotion. I want you to be holy, completely committed, and sold out um, to me and my purposes and my kingdom. In James 4, um, and it is a little of a controversial scripture, but I'm going to share it the way that I feel that it's, it's um, what it says. <laughs> so um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Um, James 4, it says, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Wow, guys. Are we being friends with the world? (laughs) Because look where we're placing ourselves. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? And, you know, partly we know that we serve this, this triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and it's so beautiful that we have the Spirit living in us. How much more doesn't God yearn and be jealous for us because His very Spirit lives inside of us? And it's, it's, it's not just that it lives. It's made its home. It resides. The one, 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 the one translation said, it dwells. The Spirit has made His home in us. So the Holy Spirit has one desire, I believe, just one. And His, his longing and His yearning is that our entire devotion would be to the Lord. That's the thing that the Spirit yearns for um, within us. And... Um, we are the bride of Christ, but each of us is actually a bride, <laughs> actually. And, um, and we don't want to go and give ourselves uh, to another lover. We want to only give ourselves to him. Um, and we want to have our needs met um, by the Lord. We don't want to have our needs met by, um, by other things um, with, that are in the world. Because those things are empty. They don't meet our needs. Why do you think people um, see us and um, on the streets, even when we evangelize, and they see, they see there's something so attractive about us? What are they seeing? 
They're seeing that within us. And that is attractive. And it's, that, it's the Holy Spirit. It's God within us that attracts people. And I, I want to become more attractive <laughs> in the Spirit. I, 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 I desperately want to become more attractive. I want to be more of Him and less of me every day. So that as I walk, people go, what is it? What is it about you um, that, that's so attractive? And I know, I, I, I know um, there's so many stories, I've had so many stories just recently of people going, people literally like stopping them um, in, a, in a queue or at a counter going like, wow, you're so beautiful. Or what is it that makes you so attractive? And it's because there's a, there's a light that shines out from us that people see and they are going to want that. They want that light. They want that life um, that is in us. So how do we how do we do this? <laughs> how do we how do we go about actually um, making him everything um, and giving our devotion completely to him? And in Galatians five, um, it says, "Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh." And this is the key. The key for us is to walk by the Spirit so that we don't gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing what you want to do. Man, it's difficult, I know. <laughs> we read this and everything in us wants to like, yes, God, I don't want to gratify the desires of my flesh. I want to, but slowly but surely, if we find ourselves slipping sometimes and we need to pull, pull ourselves back. And I want to say, please, please do this for each other. Please do this for each other. When we see each other slipping, or even um, Andrew got up and shared the other day, um, and, he, and he, he asked, we were in, uh, in uh, a town in South Africa, um, in Swellendam, and he asked the pastor, is there anything that you see in me that is actually causing other people maybe to stumble, or something that I could do better, or something? And, and he actually said, yes, there is. And, and he brought like a public correction to Andrew, but Andrew had invited that. And I know that he loves God enough to actually adjust that he loves the body enough to adjust. And for some, it might mean nothing, but for just that one person that it can cause to stumble, then it is something that we need to adjust in. And I want to say, like, um, yeah, oh, I, I don't want to use the word policeman because it's actually quite sometimes got a bad connotation, but I feel like, can we look at each other's lives? And, and can you yourself, can we be open for somebody to, to speak into us? And to say, man, I, I just, I, I feel like I've seen you constantly going to that specific pub and hanging out with some guys that are, oh, they're just not great. And I feel like maybe you just, you're going to slip into something that's not great for you. Like, could we, could we do that for each other? Because at the end of the day, we want to be together with him <laughs> um, for eternity. And we don't want one single person to not get there. Um, I want everybody that I know to be there with me. I don't want anybody to slip or even my unsafe friends. I, I want to be such a good example that they go, man, I want to be like you. Um, um, I was at the gym the other day and I have a trainer and he said to me, like, uh, he was really working me hard. And... Um, I was like, I was really thinking like, oh, actually, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And then he said to me, no, um, just swear at me. <laughs> and I was like, you know that I'm never going to swear at you. And he was like, but why not? I said, because I don't swear. And it was like he was trying to get something out of me. But it was so beautiful that when I said to him, you're never going to get me swear. And then he went like, yeah, no. And I thought, oh, man, that's so cool, you know, that someone would know. And I've only known him for like about two or three months. But already he knows something about me that I'm not going to compromise on. I'm not going to compromise on this, on this thing. And, and I'm trusting that even through something, like that, that him and his family would come um, into the church and that they would get saved. So um, remember that we are being an example um, at, at all times. Um, yeah, that we would become jealous of each other. We want the best for each other. 
in ev- in every in, in every single um, area in every single field, and um, the Holy Spirit is the is the thing that we've seen that actually is the one that empowers us to say no um, to the world and say yes to Jesus. And so I have a one of my deepest longings is that that everybody would be filled with the Spirit without measure <laughs> all the time because that way our focus will be shifted towards Him and not towards the things of this world. And um, and uh, the um, the the word says that the Holy Spirit in us and um, gives us the power to say no. So that is the power that he gives us to actually say no. And that, that we need to guard, um, even over this time that we've had um, at the conference, I feel like God's done so much in us, and that we would guard this good deposit that is placed in us um, during this time, that we'd be able to not um, go one week or two weeks or three months later and go, what did he actually do during that time? But that we'd walk in it, and then we'd walk in more, and then we'd walk in more, that we wouldn't lose what it is that God's done, and that the Holy Spirit's the thing that, the, the person that actually guards that um, within us. And the Holy Spirit is, uh, is, is, is incredible because he has all these, in, he does all these incredible things. And he renews us. He testifies of Jesus. He speaks. He commands. He brings joy. He clothes us. He enables us. He moves us. He brings truth. He teaches us. He brings pre- peace. He brings power for us to witness. And what, a, what an incredible gift that we were left with when Jesus says he, he, he will leave, but he will give us this precious Holy Spirit that will do all these things for us, that will be our friend, that will be our comforter, um, that, that we would actually be able to rely on. And he lives inside of us. And he's jealous. He's jealous over us. And he's jealous over, over that which we do and what we say and what we see and what we speak. He's jealous over all of those things. And um, I know that it's impossible for us to live without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible for us to, to, um, to, to not live in the world <laughs> with, without the Holy Spirit. Like we, we, we are going to shift there constantly constantly we're gonna it's gonna be creeping you know that you even spoke about you know that that wall that if it's only like this much off in the beginning by the time you get to the end it's like it's leaning that it's almost going to collapse and that's what it's like for our lives without the holy spirit because god is jealous 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 for us he's jealous for everything about us He's jealous for our families. He's jealous for our friends. He's jealous for this church. So my my des- my heart's desire is that you would you would go and you'd have and find this facet of God that you'd find this 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 facet of Him that is jealous over you. That when he says, like, you'll have no other gods before me, that he's serious <laughs> and he means it. And he wants us to have only eyes for him. He wants us to have an absolute, pure devotion to him. That we'll not let our eyes wander um, to other things. That we would not um, commit adultery. <laughs> Um, with our eyes or with our bodies even, that we would have one lover, and that is Jesus, that we'd have one lover, that it would just be him. Oh, God. Oh, Father. And I, I felt that while I was preparing for today, I, I, I felt the story of, of, of Mary when she falls pregnant and she, and she goes to Elizabeth. And she says... Um, she, she comes up to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says, like, the child left in a womb um, that, by the Holy Spirit. Um, I feel like there's something of a, uh, there's something of a, a pregnancy in us um, today. There's something that the Spirit wants to bring to life in us in regards to our 
pure devotion and our absolute devotion to him. That even while I've been speaking, maybe you've been feeling and thinking like, oh man, yes God, maybe that is an idol. And all you have to do is you have to say, is this thing more important to me than God? Is whatever this is more important? Is this, um, is me waking up in the morning and checking the, st- the, 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 what do you call it, the stock market? Has that become the most important thing for me? Um, instead of me waking up that half an hour early and spending time with the Lord before I even look at that, um, is me going to, uh, you know, um, going to a children's birthday party um, instead of coming to church, is that more important? And yes, those things are important that it's good to do stuff with our families, but actually he wants our devotion to this first. He wants our devotion. This is the, we're part of the bride. We're part of the bride of Christ, and he's, he's yearning, he's yearning, and he's, and, he's, and, he's, and he's longing for us. He's longing for us to come to him. He's longing for us to make him our everything and our number one. And I, I would love today to just ask you right now, if you can just maybe close your eyes and just say to the Lord, like, Lord, can you show me, can you reveal to me an idol? in my life? Can you reveal to me that thing that I've placed above you? And I want to ask you to be ruthless with yourself. Ruthless with yourself because um, we, we need to we want to inherit what God has for us. We want our full inheritance. We want to walk into everything that he has. And we're only going to do that by giving him our all and our everything. So much Ah Lord. Ah God. And maybe um today that there's someone here and you don't you've never really heard um about about God in this way and you've never really um come to the place where you've said, Lord, um I I'll make you Lord of my life. Maybe you've been afraid to give him your everything. Maybe you've just been hanging around and, and you've been on the peripheral and, and you're just feeling like, oh, I don't know if I can commit to something that's, that, that demands my life and my soul and my all. I'm telling you, there's, no, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than serving Jesus. Nothing. And I'll ask you today, if there's anybody here that um, would like to make that commitment today, I just want to give you an opportunity to do that. So if there's anybody, you can just lift your hands. Um, if God has been speaking to you, maybe your heart's pounding in your chest, um, but that he would just come and right now he's like knocking, knocking, knocking and saying, please. <laughs> oh, if there's anybody like that, is there anybody? And then for the rest of us, I just want you, if you're feeling right now that the Lord is convicting you um, about something that you've actually raised above him, um, or you're struggling even with, uh, with finding that, that balance, I want to ask you if you'd stand today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Where you've exalted something above um, the exalted one. Oh, Father. Oh, Lord. And we know that it's the Holy Spirit, actually, that comes and empowers us to say no. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers us. And I'd love you just to raise your hands. Holy Spirit, I just want to ask right now that you would come and that you'd come, your word says that you convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment. And I ask that you just come and you, you bring a conviction over us right now of those things that we have placed above you, that you would shine a spotlight on them, God, but that you would, by your Spirit, empower us right now to say no, that you would empower us by your Spirit right now that we would make our, our devotion to you, 
that all our devotion would belong to you, Jesus. That all our devotion would belong to the King. That you are a jealous God. I just felt the Lord gave me a key um, because often we're so blind to our own idolatry, aren't we? I think that's one of the things that love does to us. It blinds us. And when we infatuate it with something, um, it's very hard to see. And, and I just felt the Lord say to me now, ask this question, what are you afraid of? Which things would, are you afraid of God taking away from you? Those are the things that's become just a little bit too important. And now what do we do with that? Because it's not like we can go up and like sacrifice our children or whatever, like, you know, sell them to the Russians. We, we, what do we do with the things that we may be holding onto too tightly? And I, and I just feel we can just go, Lord, it's yours. It's yours. They're safe in your hands anyway than they are in mine, whether it's my possessions or my loved ones um, or the dreams I have for my life, the, the ministry, the ways that I would love you to use me in, my gifts. It doesn't matter. Like, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. So check for that little fear thing. What if, what if God takes my husband? What if God, um, like, breaks up this relationship? What if God... Uh, takes that house what if God asked that car of me (laughs) like whatever it is you're afraid that he would require of you just surrender it to him surrender it to him